it's uh, Sid from Cool Movie Gram, your source for everything about cool films. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and uh, check out my other videos for more cool movie related content. Well, my first video in what feels like forever. It's been like about a month since I've done something fresh, something new. Just been posting a few archive videos, or archive videos from Instagram and um, that was whilst I was fasting during the month of Ramadan. Well, now that Eid is over and uh, well, I'm in currently my work clothes at the moment because uh, I've got a new job and working in the office now. So yeah, that's about it really. But this is a part of the, uh, the Asian Cinema Circle. It's another one of their videos. Uh, this is a collective of several YouTubers. Uh, I'll be putting uh, a link to their videos in uh in the description below and also uh i urge you to check out their channels they have some amazing videos and uh yeah and they all have their own uh, list of uh top five hong kong film um filmmakers there's going to be five directors that i was actually considering um that were my favorites out of all the filmmakers that there are in hong kong now hong kong has so many classic filmmakers and um, they've made some amazing movies across a variety of genres and I mean out of the ones that these are just my personal opinion some people might have others as their favorites and uh, these are just the ones that I actually enjoy and I will be also delving into their um, into their finer works as well the first on my list is Derek Yee. Now, Derek Yee was a, uh, a former actor from the Shaw Brothers sta uh, stable. He had appeared in uh, Heaven, Sword and Dragon Saber, um, Death Duel, uh, which had also remade as Swordmaster uh, not so long back at the, in, in the last decade. And he had also appeared in, um, in several other hits too. And he went on to become possibly one of the most unique voices in hong kong cinema after the whole uh the fall of um or the stop the stopping of um shaw brothers and he became like a very kind of great not just a genre filmmaker but also just someone who actually tells interesting stories um i mean his uh, directorial debut which was in 1985 or 86 i believe was called the lunatics which um also featured um chai and fat in a small role uh in a, well, in a smaller known role uh, of a film which was more about the treatment of the mentally ill in um in the poorer sides of hong kong society and also starred his other half brother paul chun who um you know everyone in this movie gave great performances and um it was just a, a you know a really well made thought-provoking film and he went on to make films such as um kind of a, a, a loose re kind of like a reworking of Sidney Lumet's Dog Day Afternoon with Al Pacino. His version was called People's Hero, starring T. Lung and also um, a young Tony Lung as well. And his other one of his other notable films include uh, Lost in Time, starring Lao Ching Wan and uh, Cecilia Cheung, which was a really kind of touching kind of drama uh, drama set in modern day hong kong about uh, loss and uh, people going through grief and also um there was the uh, the solid genre film such as one night in mong kong which is um, an urban crime thriller about a an assassin who's um navigating the nightlife of the mong kong district um and also who bumps into a prostitute played by Cecilia Chung again and also, his movie Protégé, which starred um, Daniel Wu uh, in a um, in a in a role as a uh, an undercover cop who's um, shadowing and also um, trying to bring down a drug kingpin, and it's about the heroin trade in Asia and the impact it has on the um, on on addicts and society and such. Which was a great movie and also he did um jackie chan's movie shinjuku incident which was one of the first times that he had actually played a very darker and more serious character prior to the foreigner and yeah he has a very distinct style and i've always found his work to be thoroughly enjoyable in that sense and then number four is 
Johnny Toll. Now, Johnny Toll, of course, is, is also the head of the, uh, the Milky, Way, Milky Way production company, which releases nearly all of his films now. And um, someone who had actually started off as a TV director under the tutelage of um, veteran Wang Tin Lam, who had also, um, who's also the father of Wang Jing, um, who had learned, how, learned about the skills of filmmaking and eventually kind of made it... Um, made it big and he does a very a variety of different genre type of films now he does very um he can do very heartwarming you know rom-coms and romantic dramas and such and comedies he's worked we've done some great movies with uh stephen chow uh such as um um justice my foot and also the underrated mad monk and then you could have something like um films like um, his his genre work like his, his more films that he has no he's known for he's an emotional drama such as all about our long which was uh, possibly one of chain fat's finest performances in the um in in the 80s but then his um his crime thrillers um well the big heat was kind of a film that he was brought on by cinema city after the original director had dropped out um, but his films like A Hero Never Dies, uh, which was kind of like um, a, a homage to John Woo films. Uh, then you had Election 1 and 2, which was um, kind of about the politics within an organized, uh, tri a triad organization. I mean, both parts absolutely amazing. I mean, although personally I would lean more towards Election Part 2, I thought it was just an absolutely solid, you know, just a great genre movie. Uh, Exiled, again, a great kind of like underworld action drama thriller, which um, has kind of like um, throwbacks to his own film, his style. Uh, he has this kind of very abstract kind of feel to the action, which has a very spaghetti western type of feel to it. And it's done, done with such e cool and just amazingness. And then The Mission, which was kind of a predecessor to Exile, which was a part of his Gunman trilogy, which finished with Vengeance. And um, also his other more unique films, such as Running on Karma, which features Andy Lau in a, playing a monk in a really huge kind of like bodysuit and about like a uh, on the hunt for a serial killer. And um, it's just, yeah, he's, he's, he's done great films, although his more recent efforts like uh, the movie Three was not that great. But I found Drug War to be uh, thoroughly enjoyable. I, I, I kind of I, I kind of enjoyed it on on revisiting it, and um, yeah, he's definitely he has a very unique kind of feel. It doesn't make us just a a, a generic a generic kind of um, drama. I mean, even something as like generic as like an action movie as Breaking News that he has directed, it kind of adds more of a human element to it, and. Um, you know, it's just, it's just, it's got that unique kind of Johnny Toll kind of touch, especially the the opening sequence, which is just like a, a, a single steady cam shot, and a shootout takes place within that, and it's just absolute. That's just like filmmaking brilliance, and definitely one of my all time favorite filmmakers uh, from Hong Kong. I mean, number four is Johnny Toll, and uh, number three, the late great Ringo Lam. I mean, he's done uh, just. An array of like different genres but his 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 crime dramas are the one to kind of like look out for i mean his action movies i mean the underrated burning paradise which was um kind of like a, a, a very loose kind of reworking of uh chang she's uh, 1976 classic shaolin temple um where it kind of features uh wow well, the story of like hong si kwan and feng shi yu as as the kind of like principal characters from what I remember, I saw this film ages ago, but it's such a brilliantly great movie. I hope that the Eureka would be picking that up for um, a Blu-ray release in the UK. Uh, but then, of course, his On Fire series. I mean, City on Fire being the one that the film that was pretty much a huge inspiration on um, uh, for Reservoir Dogs, and then his Prison on Fire one and two, both brilliant films. Uh, School on Fire was great. And then he also had his kind of homage to uh, Chang Che's One Armed Swordsman in the form of Full Contact, which was actually the first film I reviewed for this channel. And of, and also Wild Search, which was one of his best movies, which was kind of a um, a crime thriller 
uh, which also kind of involves a a human drama about like uh, two you know imperfect people who you know who are drawn together in the event of a murder investigation where a cop falls into falls in love with a um a victim's sister and there are certain things in societal kind of like aspects which are kind of like keeping them apart but yet they both want to be together but at the same time you have uh, a a murderous uh, gunman played by Roy Chung who wants to um get revenge and kind of like uh, protect his boss at all costs but um it's just you know it's, the film was just absolutely amazingly well written and well acted and that's what I kind of like I like about the Ringo Lamb style is that he actually has this kind of very realistic feel to the some of his action sequences they feel like they're very painful to be in I mean even films like um, Full Alert when someone actually gets hurt in the movie you kind of see them anguishing in pain it's like did they really do that? <laughs> you know, it's just, it's just, abs- I mean, even in his, um, his Hollywood efforts, I mean, he'd done a few with, um, with Jean-Claude Van Damme, like Maximum Risk, uh, Replicant, and, um, In Hell. I mean, he did, he start on Wake of Death, but unfortunately, for some reason, he had actually skipped that, um, that project. And, uh, yeah, he kind of, um, but then, you know, but I would say still, even though his Hollywood works were not really as great as his, um, his Hong Kong works, he still, you know, he was still one of the greatest filmmakers for, you know, working in Hong Kong. Um, hmm, number two, now between number two and number one, I was very kind of like indecisive. They, I mean, these are kind of interchangeable. They could either be number two or they could either be number one, they could always switch places with one another, is John Wu. Yeah, now John Wu, uh, someone who started off as a, an assistant to Chang Chi, working on some Shaw Brothers films, such as um, Boxer from Boxer from Shang Tung and The Water Margin. Um, and um, he then kind of like progressed to uh, an actual director, someone who wanted to actually be an actor initially. Then um, he'd actually kind of made his way to becoming an assistant to Chang Chi, kind of learning the the uh, the craft, kind of adapting his to his own style. But then he had become signed with Golden Harvest, becoming a um, a very studio director. His films were very kind of throughout like the um, the seventies and such. His films were pretty much very stand standard kind of like st- studio vehicles, which you know could be either underrated by some kung fu movies like his first actual feature length movie that he did was the young dragons and actually featured like um choreography by jackie chan which was his um the first time he'd actually been billed as a fight choreographer and um, he had also done films like uh, the hand of death um which also featured jackie chan in one of his earlier um starring roles as one of the in a supporting uh, in a support start start star, star, starring role build roles in a supporting actor role role but um yeah and then he had also kind of like directed quite a few kind of like um just madcap hong kong comedies but then i think once he kind of um broke free from uh from the golden harvest contract uh although last for after chivalry was a great movie too he kind of like found his own voice with um cinema city and Film Workshop, which was Choi Hawk's company, uh, Film Workshop, and um, he had actually made his breakthrough, um, A Better Tomorrow, which, again, that kind of started off a whole different type of genre of um, action movies and kind of crime dramas. Um, he had done films, um, you know, especially his films with um, with Chow Yun Fat. I mean, that be that being the first um, the first collaboration. He had done films such as. Um, the killer and hard boil definitely being like you know the cream of the crop uh, as well as a uh, bullet in the head which although it was a major financial disaster and a critical failure at the time has been kind of revisited and many people have kind of rated it as possibly one of jean Wu's best films and um and also even his uh he had done like a light-hearted action comedy in the form of uh, once a thief which was kind of like which was very enjoyable then even his um he went he, even though he had had an actual somewhat successful career 
in um, in Hollywood with uh, a string of successes, um, starting with Hard Target, starring Jean Claude Van Damme, then the John Travolta and Christian Slater vehicle, Broken Arrow, then Face Off, which I would say is definitely his best Hollywood movie, and and his highest grossing film yet, which is uh, Mission Impossible 2. And then he had a couple of uh, duds in the form of um, Wind Talkers and Paycheck, thanks to studio interference. But um, thankfully, he was able to uh, return to uh, Asia and made his first like Chinese language film since uh, 1992, which was Red Cliff, which was an amazing, just a thrilling, excellent, epic film. Now, he has actually returned to... Um, to Hollywood to make his uh, first American movie since Paycheck, which was called Silent Night. And um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I mean, it's John Woo after all. I mean, hopefully this will show that he's still, he still got it. And definitely, I mean, I would say when it comes to like the action genre, John Woo is definitely an auteur. I mean, I could put him in the same ranks as someone such as uh, James Cameron or... Um, <sighs> Yeah, James Cameron, Richard Donner, and John McTiernan. I would say John Woo is in the ranks of those kind of people. He's just a, a great, um, you know, he, he is just like a unique voice of Hong Kong cinema that shaped the kind of movies that were coming out, not just in the East, but also in the West. Now, honorable mentions. Uh, before we get to number one, I'm going to be uh, going through a few names uh, that I had actually listed that were all in my top five or almost made it in my top five but then kind of like had to sift out unfortunately um the first being Choi Hark definitely an amazing kind of a visionary filmmaker I mean right from like uh, his earlier days his breakthrough being the uh, amazingly classic uh, zoo warriors from the magic mountain and um you know the standout works being like the once upon a time in China movies um and even his more recent efforts, like the uh, the big budget epic, uh, the Detective D kind of like uh, miss series with by um, well, the first one being with Andy Lau, absolutely amazing kind of like visually striking action films. Um, second one being Samuel Hung, definitely when it comes to like kung fu filmmakers, I would think that kung fu movies uh, directors need to have their own list because there are just so many great ones like Samuel Hung, Lau Ka Lung, and Chang Che. They would made some absolutely classic bangers, and even Yung Wu Ping. Um, yeah, but Sam Hong has just made some absolutely amazing kind of action movies throughout his um, his heyday. I mean, starting from like the 70s all the way throughout to the 80s. I mean, his final works being The Prodigal Son, Warriors 2, um, Eastern Condors, Millionaires Express, uh, Wheels on Wheels, Dragons Forever, the Lucky Stars movies like Winners and Sinners and such. I mean, he's again a great filmmaker. Jackie Chan. I mean, even as a, as a, as an actor, he's he's kind of like lit the screen up. He's one of the greatest action stars of all time. But even as a filmmaker, when he was directing his films, some of his directed films are possibly his best movies made. I mean, notably being like the the first two police story films, Project A. Um, I enjoyed the Young Master as hokey as it might have been, but that was pretty good. Um, you had like the Armor of God films, like the first two, not the third one. The CZ Twelve was a bit, nah, that was a letdown. Um, but you had Miracles, one of his like finest, to finest directed films. Project A Part Two, notably being like some of the best like cinematography that he had used prior to Miracles, and um, La, and also Stephen Chow is another one who's in my. Um, my list of uh, filmmakers from Hong Kong. You know, great as a comedian, he is in, in his movies as a leading man. But as a filmmaker, he has made either visually striking, kind of like hilarious movies with lots of humor. Uh, films such as well, Forbidden City Cop was was great. Uh, but films such as um, which I also reviewed. Uh, films such as Shaolin Soccer, Kung Fu Hustle. And uh, the last film that he acted in, which was uh, CJ7, was like a scientific, science fiction family comedy. Um, but since then, he has actually just been focusing on behind the camera, making films like the first Journey, the Journey to the West movie that he had directed, and also um, the movies, big budget movies like The Mermaid. Uh, but he had also done like emotional movies, like for example, um, King of Comedy. Nothing to do with the Martin Scorsese. Um, 80s film which was starring Robert De Niro but this was just more about a uh, a struggling actor who's kind, kind of like um, 
trying to make ends meet and break through into the business, which was quite funny. And uh, also, at the same time, a kind of an, an intriguing story with possibly his best acting to date. Um, right. Number one. <sighs> My favourite Hong Kong filmmaker of all time has to be, no surprise here, Wong Kar Wai. Now, Wong Kar Wai is, like, I don't know, definitely one of those voices that has had a unique style. I mean, considering that he started off as a screenwriter writing films such as The the Haunted Cop Shop and then crime drama, um, Walk on Fire, and even uh, the Chain of Fact um, triad movie, Flaming Brothers, which he had done with Alan Tang. Uh, but his directorial debut, which was produced by Alan Tang in the shape of uh, As Tears Go By, which was a kind of like a, a loose, very loose adaptation of... Um, Martin Scorsese's Mean Streets, which kind of featured Andy Lau and Maggie Chung in a role that kind of like launched them, launched them both into like a different kind of like level in terms of like how they were viewed as actors, rather than just kind of like uh, you know just popular stars, but they were actually taken more serious as actors after that movie. Um, you know, it was just downright gritty and violent but had that kind of very vibrant style thanks to the uh, amazing cinematography of um, Andrew Lau who was able to actually Andrew Lau was able to kind of like capture Wong Kar Wai's vision you know through the lens perfectly and then um, of course his uh, follow-up Days of Being Wild which was absolutely an amazing film but for me his not best films like I would say like The Chunking Express for me is, is my all-time favorite Wong Kar Wai film and that film just has like great style the pacing is great and even the use of like um, the characters in voiceover, which is a very kind of like a Scorsese cliche and almost kind of like almost become a Wong Kar Wai cliche, which has kind of been used in a lot of his films. Um, and even in The Mood for Love, I mean, it was a well made movie, 2046, again, you know, visually striking movie, and The Grandmaster, which was kind of a. Um, his take on the, the story of Ip Man, um, which again, I would say is one of the most visually stunning films I have ever seen. And um, definitely, I mean, there's just something, whenever, even Fallen Angels, again, a great film as well, which is kind of like a counterpart to Chunking Express. But um, I mean, overall, his, his, he is, I would say definitely my favorite kind of, my favorite filmmaker. I mean, you know, those are the films that I would say, you know, if you watch them, I mean, they, you can see why a lot of people in film school tend to kind of gravitate towards Wong Kar Wai. I mean, the one person that I would actually compare to Wong Kar Wai, I would say, is um, Jean-Pierre de Melville. They have a very kind of similar feel to their films. When you, when you look at filmmakers such as Park chan Wook, when you see some of his films, he has a very kind of like Wong Kar Wai kind of like t style or twist towards it. But in their own way, even Bong Joon-ho, Bong Joon-ho, in certain in certain films had that kind of a feel and you know where cinematography and like the characters thoughts are kind of like kind of all meshed together and it's just kind of it's you know he's, he is you know definitely i would say definitely the most kind of like gifted filmmaker coming from you know from the uh the former british colony well, you know, I guess I rambled on for long enough. Uh, this was my uh, my tip pick for um, top five Hong Kong filmmakers. Uh, let me know in the comment section who would you say is there anyone that I missed out? I mean, there are film some filmmakers whose films I love, but then when I look at their other kind of like um, the other filmography, it's just like it's too inconsistent. Whereas these filmmakers that I feel that I have actually picked have actually rather been been very very consistent in terms of the quality of films that they have put out and you know just when you look at their films and you kind of kind of like uh, keep on visit, revisiting them you can see why they have they have such um, a higher level of um, of appreciation not just in terms of like the audience for in, in Hong Kong but also the um, like an international audience right okay that was my five cents so i look forward to the other videos make sure to check out the other channels from the asian cinema circle and we'll um i'll catch you on my next video